Hey, honey buns. Welcome. I want to come in and talk to you guys about some braider etiquette that you need to take into consideration as a brand new or a seasoned braider. Okay, let's go ahead and let's get into it. All right. Okay, so hey, you guys, I want to talk about a couple of things. I'm going to talk about seven, okay? And I'm not going to keep y'all wrong because we just need to use the point. First things first, I need you guys to communicate. I'm hearing a lot of bad things about some braiders out here. Y'all not responding. Y'all not responding. Y'all canceling. Y'all running late. Or y'all are not even responding, okay? Do yourself a favor. If you're going to be late, a no-show cancellation, let people know. Communicate that. The second thing with that is I want you guys to respond. Whether or not you can honor somebody's appointment, whether or not you, you're available on that day, um, just respond because you want people to know you're in business and that you're the type of braider that responds, okay? The second thing I want you to think of is you need to always be pricing your stuff so that you're not worried about a tip. You should not be pressed about a tip. Okay, people tip you because they want to. They don't tip you because they have to. So you need to be pricing your braiding so that whether or not you get a tip, you should be satisfied with what you're getting. So tipping is not mandatory, okay? Tipping is optional, okay? People do not have to tip you, boo, okay? The third thing is I need for you to clarify the style. Before that person sits in your chair, you need to be clarifying what exactly you're doing for that person, okay? Is this... French braises, these feeding braises, these flat twisties, is these, um, you know, fox locks, is these individuals, is these box braids. You need to know what you're doing before somebody sits in your chair for two reasons. One, you want to give people exactly what they're asking for. Two, you need a time frame because you need to make sure you gauge that because if you have somebody coming next or if you need to go somewhere next, you need to be prepared for that. So that's why you want to know what style you're doing before the person gets in your chair so you can give them what they want as well as have time for your previous or next client, okay? Your price, your pricing should not be a secret. Go watch my other video that I just dropped about how to price or my suggestion to price some of your um, braiding styles, okay? Your pricing should not be a mystery. Your pricing should not be a secret. Mando, mandatory, you need to at least be sharing with people what your basic hairstyles cost just so that they can round about know what kind of hairstylist greater you are and how much you more or less charge. Again, your pricing should not be a secret. Go watch my other video, okay? The um, next thing is you need to be honest. Be honest with your skills. Be honest with what you know how to do because just like I said with um, clarifying the style, same thing here with being honest is you want to make sure you're giving people exactly what they want, okay? I've told you guys before in other videos, you do not want to give people what you think they want because they'll walk out of your chair unhappy. They'll tell you they're happy with it, but then they'll leave unhappy. So I need you to be honest about the skills you have and be honest about the styles you know how to do so that you can satisfy the client and you can have a repeated client for the following or the next time. Okay. I also want you to learn some things about natural hair. Just don't be jumping around doing people hair. You need to learn about natural hair, whether that's going to take a natural hair class, whether that's watching some of these videos. You need to know about natural hair, about, you know, washing it, taking care of it, and what not to put in it, what you should not be doing as a braider, okay? Somebody's permanent hair and they're helping your chair, do not do their hair, okay? Somebody is asking you to do something that's beyond your scope of a braider, don't do it, okay? Now, unless you have cosmetology experience and a license, do you, boo. But most of us, we're braiding and we're just doing it as braiders without a license because some states you do not need licensing. Go look at my other video. Do you need a license to braid hair? Okay, but many of us are just doing braiding, braiding hair as freelancing. So do not go over the scope of being a braider. So you need to learn some things about natural hair before you start putting your hands in people's hair, Okay. Last but not least is be careful with the recommendations you make for people because everybody's hair is not the same. A lot of our hairs are different. Yes, four C's, you know, four this and this. Yes, but a lot of people's hair is different. So be careful with the recommendations you make. If anything, use the things that you know work for you and be careful and be cautious and tell people that this is a suggestion. This is not a recommendation. This is just something you use on your own hair, something that you would recommend for them. Do not Set it as a um, 
something stamped in stone. So be careful with the products that you recommend, again, because all of our hair is not the same. So for those of you who want to know how I started my braiding business with $10, go in the description below. The link is there. It's a replay, okay? And you see how I started my business, um, my braiding business with $10, as well as I tell you guys how I did my Craigslist. All right, so you guys, I hope this was helpful. Hashtag pretty gang in the comments if you made it to the end, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, y'all.